Ian, that was a, a very hard watch, uh, a 4-1 defeat here at Dens Park. Give us your views on the game, please. Well, I think it starts from the, uh, the first couple of minutes where you, you've got to give yourself a, um, a platform to go and, go and play from and you find yourself two down in eight minutes and all of a sudden it's a mountain to climb. And, um, you know, you look at the goals back and there's some uh, poor decisions defensive-wise, but it's um, you're not just looking at your back four, it's... It, it's your reaction to losing the ball high up the pitch and how quick do you get back and what's your desire to try and get back into a defensive position to try and help your teammates out and um, it's the whole the whole thing. I, I never single anybody out for, for, for individual errors. It normally has a knock-on effect and that's what's happening at the moment. You must be tearing your hair out though because you work all week, you put so much into preparation, you're at Fir Park almost from first thing in the morning to last thing at night trying to do this but you know when you lose goals in the manner in which we are losing goals you're never going to win football games. No, but all you can do is, is again, when, when you've got access to the players and, and that's becoming more and more because you've got to try and get it across to them that um, this, is a, this is livelihoods at, at stake for, for everybody. Um, players are coming out of contract. Players are, are trying to tell me that they want to be in this team and at this football club where they get looked after very, very well. And, um, you know, they've got to go and showcase themselves. That's what I said after the game whether it's to be in my team or, or for another manager to take them. You know, they've got to, they've got to show that they've got the, the desire uh, and talent to, to go and get picked by anybody. And at the moment, there's not enough that that's, that's happened. You're the manager and you, it's your job to demand things. But do you think players need to demand more of themselves at, 12, at, at times as well? For sure, yeah. But, you know, it starts with, um, with themselves. But I think, that, you know, and again, they've got to be demanding of each other. I think there's almost an acceptance at times that somebody's not quite in the right place, somebody's not quite doing the job, and we've got to be big enough to, to tell them. Do you think the best players in the world um, accept from their teammates when it's going wrong, when it's not quite right? No, they don't. No, they, I, I know for a fact. And, and they've got to demand more for themselves, but demand from each other. You've thrown in a number of young players. I would imagine it's probably not the ideal setup to be throwing these young kids in because it's a steep learning curve for them. You know, that's three players you've given their debut to in the last three weeks. It's not, it's, you know, it's a. I love what they give you, the enthusiasm. Um, they'll give you absolutely everything. And I've given them their debuts because they've shown me in training that they want to be involved in the fight. But ideally, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expose them to that. Um, Dom Thomas has given an hour and he's running himself into the ground. And, and yeah, maybe he's, I can accept him being in the wrong position at different times because he wants to make things happen. Uh, but uh, we've been forced into doing that because of uh, because of the need for a freshness, for the need for um, some sort of change in mindset. And we can't leave it up to the young players to to go and be the flag bearers. You mentioned that competition for places has been a problem for you as well. We've got you know again eight, nine players sitting in the stand. Is there any better news you can give my little supporters on when we can hope to start to see some guys coming back into training and hopefully back into games? Well, I think there's, I think there's a possibility of two or three coming in this week from, um, from the injury point of view. And whether they're ready to go into a, a game straight away is a, another question because you've got to be so careful not to expose it again, expose them to too much too soon and they break down again. as what's happened with Stevie Hamill. And, um, you know, it's players like that where you... You need their experience, you need their calmness in possession. And, and you know, we talk about people being brave and, and throwing themselves into tackles. But I want people to be brave, brave on the football, make good decisions, want to get on the ball, want to make the difference, want to be the one that, that, that is the game changer. And, um, you know, too few times today, we didn't see that. You know, the goal we've gone and scored was a, a case in question where someone's gone and made a run on the, um, on the overlap, on a a selfless run, maybe to try and uh, give somebody else some more room. Um, we've played early balls, we've attacked the cross that's come in at the near post and, and we've got ourselves a decent goal to get ourselves back in the game. But then, poor decisions has, um, has cost us in there. Is that even more frustrating because there are wee spells in games as flashes as Smyrna game today, we are scoring good goals, but you know it's been, it's been you know, cancelled out by disappointments elsewhere in the park? Yeah, too, um, too few occasions that's happened and it's, um, you know, so you know you can do it. But it's not happening. So again, is that me who demands that all the time? Or do they demand it from themselves, demand it from each other? And, and the most successful sides, I go back to it again, demand from each other. You, as well as working hard on next game preparation and training, you're also working hard 
on a January transfer window. Um, I'm sure you'll be hoping that you can maybe add one or two faces to the squad to give everybody a lift. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think so. But, you know, January is a, a notoriously difficult month to try and entice people to come in. And you've got to have the right characters as well. And, um, you know, you're bringing them into a situation where they're, they're in a dogfight. So the players want to come into that situation. Um, you know, we've got to, again, make sure that they're the right, right sort of person financially as well for this football club. So it is a difficult time, but um, we'll bring one or two in, I'm sure. And, and, and again, it's a, a message to those that are, are in the side at the moment or in the squad. You know, do they want to be part of the, the 11 going forward? The 18 on a, on a, a 70 on a, on a match day? And, um, you know, it's, I need people to stand up and, and tell me that. Two final questions. The first one, game related. Henrico Yama's red card. I don't know if you had a chance to see it, and if you have, have you any complaints with it? No. Um, having looked at it a couple of times, you know, Henrik's made that motion with his arm. I don't think there's too much force in it, but the, the player's been very cute and he's gone down. And um, he's given the, the referee a decision to make, and one that I can see why he's made that decision. So call it petulance, call it uh, frustration that he was maybe getting tugged from behind. You can't do it. You can't do it nowadays because you give referees an easy, easy decision. So, um, no, I don't, I don't believe there is a, uh, a case to, <laughs> for the defence, if you like. One final question. I asked you the same after Aki's. The Mullow fans up in the corner here were, were fantastic. They stayed to the end. They, they sang all game. They gave you, tried to give you backing and support. Yeah. Um, what, what's the message to them? What's the, what, what is the, you know, what encouragement can you try and give them at this stage? You just, you just want to give them something to, you know, so they've, they've travelled an hour and a half here many of them in poor conditions you want to give them something to get out their seat for um, and it's not nice hopefully as a, as a player they, they understand it's not nice for me when, when there's frustrations and I can understand those frustrations at the end of a game or at half time that they're demanding better but I'm demanding better uh, and players have got to demand better from themselves so you know the message you're asking for one you know we've got to stay strong as a group together that's not just the players and, and coaching staff and management that's everybody to do with the football club and the fans have a, a big part to play with that. It's difficult at the moment. I understand that, um, but you know we'll, we'll we'll work as hard as we can to to try and turn it so that they've got something to to cheer about. Ian, thank you. Thank you.